much the first. 1995, the survivor is Bill uh, Richard, Carol Weiss, the interviewer, Santa Monica, USA, and should be in English. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Would you please tell us your name, your date of birth, and where you were born? My name is Richard Bilawa, and I was born January 1st, 1925, in Warsaw, Poland. Mr. Bilawa? Your father was Israel Julian Bilawa. That's right. And your mother was Malka Reichert. R E I C H E R T. C H. C H. Yes. E R T. Okay. Would you please tell us about your mother and father as you remember them? Uh, let's start with my mother. My mother, I do not remember too well because um, she. I w w left my home from Warsaw, and uh, she was sick at that time, and um, she passed away in 1942, still in Gebe. One month before my father and my brother were deported. What I remember about my mother, she was um, a pretty lady not because I say so, but other people said so. And um, she was always working. She uh, managed a store, or owned a store, a jewelry store, on Marshall Koska in Warsaw. And um, we only spent time with my mother and father on the weekends mostly on the Sunday, because Saturday sometimes they work too. And during vacation times, we used to go near Warsaw to uh, Schwider, which was a pretty little town. And we spent uh, we with my brother stayed there for a couple of months. My parents came for weekends or sometimes for a couple of weeks. As I remember, my mother was um, not well. I believe she had cancer, and uh, so she spent a lot of time uh, in hospitals. And um, she used to go to Marienbad and Karlsbad for cures. My father. Um, Thank God survived, and uh, just passed away last July. Uh, he um, was uh, 95 years old when he passed away. But also, um, after the war, we spent some time together in Lübeck, when I came after the war. And then uh, they moved to Israel with his second wife. He remarried in 1948. And they went to Israel. And so since after the war, we spent just a couple of months here on a visit, a couple of months in Israel, or later on in Australia or the move. And how old were you when you left Warsaw? Uh, when I left Warsaw, I was, that was 39, something like that, 14, 15 years old. You were 14 or 15 years old? And mm. where did you go? Uh, I left Warsaw on November 15, uh, 1939. My father decided that I should leave Warsaw. He was afraid that the, the German might, might kidnap me because he had two jewelry stores. So they, uh, he was afraid. So um, he sent me away uh, with my cousins, two cousins, to Bialystok. We had to, of course, go through a border between uh, Russia and Germany, which was not far away from Bialystok. We went by horse and buggy, and uh, we had very few things with us. Only uh, I remember my father was in the jewelry business, so he gave me a box of his watches, which later on um, I uh, was selling 
in Bialystok to the Russians, and this way I can uh, support myself. I was in Bialystok a few months when the Russian uh, uh, decided that they, they declared that whoever wants to go back to, to Warsaw is free to do so. And they, uh, of course, we had to sign papers. Well, you were living as a Jew. You weren't considering your... No, 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 no. I was... I was a Jew. They allowed Jews who escaped Warsaw or, or the Germans to go back if they wanted to. They said so. However, only one train... Uh, they allowed one train to go back to Warsaw. I asked my parents by writing... Uh, or by, by messengers, not, not special, people who were going back and forth, Sh what should I do? Should I go back or should I stay? They said I should come back. So I declared, um, uh, OK, I'm willing to go back. But uh, as I mentioned before, only one, p one train went back. And all others, they surrounded. They took us to a school from one day to another, without, uh, without telling us what's going to happen. They told us to come with our s small s things to the school, and then uh, they shipped us to Russia. So from Bialystok, you went on the train. You wanted to go back to Warsaw. Went back to, you did go back to Warsaw? No, no, no. Never got no, no, no. They only sent one train with people to Warsaw. All the others they shipped to whoever wanted to go back to Russia, to, to uh, Warsaw, they didn't trust us. So they all shipped us to, to Russia. You're in Russia. Now, uh, they took us uh, with a train to um, Arkhangelsk. Arkhangelsk, I oboist. Did you spell that properly? No, I won't try. Arhangelskaya Oboas Ustiutsky Rayon. That was, that was um, first, it took us three weeks by train. Of course, it was not uh, first, not third, not even fourth class. It was, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a curl. A curl, curl uh, you train. You had no idea where you were going? No, we didn't have no idea what we, where we were going. I only remember I took um, one piece of bread, one loaf of bread, and a quarter of vodka on the train. That had to last for a while. We stopped at, um, we had stopped at many times, but which I remember one stop was at Minsk, and we saw a lot of Russian Jews. They were looking at us and say, oh, we are so sorry. Who knows where, where, where do they take you? And uh, it took us, as I said, uh, three weeks till uh, one stop, the last stop, so to speak, where at the station where maybe, I don't know exactly, but maybe 10 trains with other people with from, uh, from Poland, from the Russian part of Poland. At that, of course, we mingled around and talked wh what's, going to, what's going to be. And uh, I met my cousin and his wife. But he didn't know that I was there, and I didn't know that he was there. And uh, from there, they took us by... Um, trucks took us in the woods separately. Uh, they distribute for 500 people here, 500 people in other places. It was about, um, I would say, about 500 people together in, in one um, camp. Before you got back on the truck and you had stopped in Minsk, how long were you there for before? No, no, no. And Minsk was only on the way. I'm sorry, the last stop that you made before you Arhan, In Arhangelsk, okay. yes. How long were you there? How long did you stay before they put you on 
maybe uh, 24, 48 hours. And, and while you were on the plane the whole time, not knowing where you were going, what were your thoughts? What did you think about the world? Were you having food? Were you hungry? Mm -hmm. We were hungry. We, we were worrying where they were going to take us because we didn't realize that that will save our lives. Because we d this way we didn't uh, go to uh, German camp. And were you aware at that time of, of the camps? No, <laughs> no. This was only in the, in the mm, maybe May, June of uh, 1940. Oh, okay. So at that time nobody knew about the camps. But what were your thoughts about the fact that you had to leave? I mean, the world was so crazy. But, uh, you, you know, I was 14, 15. What do I knew about uh, anything? I, um, they took us there in, in the woods and um, uh, in a big barracks. There were about 50 or 60 people together. And we had to uh, go to work. So we didn't worry about what's, uh, what's doing outside of this barrack, outside of this camp. And you were with your cousins too at this time? No, my cousins went to another, uh, to another uh, place, in another camp. We were at the camp, where, as I said, about a few hundred people. There were three soldiers and one uh, officer, and they were taking care of the whole and we had to go every day to work in the woods, cutting woods, and uh, didn't uh, we get our um, 800 uh, grams of bread and uh, some fish soup, and that, uh, that, that was it. However, uh, my parents, I don't know how, but they uh, sent to me three packages which uh, helped a lot because uh, I could trade uh, some shoes and boots and some other stuff for food. And uh, this helped a lot. At that camp, I don't remember exactly how long we were there. The, there was no uh, attempt to escape because it was the nearest uh, village or nearest town was probably uh, hundreds of uh, kilometers or miles away. And through woods, nobody even tried. Uh, f uh, 19, I don't know exactly the year, but uh, just when the war started between the Russian and the German, which was, I think, 41, uh, they took us out of the camp. And by trains, they send us on the way to uh, Asia, to Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. On the way, I remember I got sick. I got uh, typhoid fever. So they took me off the train. And um, I stayed um, in the hospital in Saratov, uh, quite a big city in Russia not far from Stalingrad, which was very famous. At that. So I was in the hospital about f three or four weeks. And after that, they put me in another transport, which wa was going to uh, Asia, to Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. I was in Tashkent for a couple of days. And then they shipped us to um, to Kazakhstan. Uh, Tashkent is in Uzbekistan. They shipped us to Kazakhstan a few hundred uh, miles away. Um, the name of the town was Lenger, L-E-G-E-R. It was a um, um, small town with where they were um, looking for uh, um, oil. And um, then we worked there on the, on the uh, so 
looking for uh, drilling for oil. I was there for a couple of months, and they uh, sent us to a kibbutz, a kolhos, not kibbutz, which is a sort of a kibbutz. What, how do you say it? Kolhos. Okay. I don't know how. Uh, it's, uh, there we work in the fields. And uh, there was, uh, was better because whatever uh, we could, uh, you know, whatever it was in, in the cohorts, whatever they sold, food, fruit, or whatever, we could, of course, eat. So there was no shortage of food there. So we stayed there for a few years, and um, we were. When the war was over, 1945, of course, they asked us if we want to become Russian citizen, or we rather not. So, of course, we decided not to. And in 1946, in May, or maybe in April, they uh, let us go back to Poland. Oh, they, 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 the same way I came to Russia, <laughs> only uh, the, the, the train was a little better. And uh, I arrived in Poland uh, in the beginning of May. I arrived in Poznan, in Poland. From there, I went, of course, to Warsaw to see what's doing. I didn't, yeah? Through the whole time, I received a few letters from Israel, where I had a big family, my uncles and aunts. And uh, through them, I, I uh, had uh, news from my father and my brother. And they survived. Uh, my father was in Auschwitz, and then uh, from Auschwitz, they took him to Sachsenhausen, because he was a watchmaker in Sachsenhausen, then they needed watchmakers to repair their watches and clocks. And my uh, brother survived Auschwitz. He was lucky. And you were with your father the whole time? No. Okay. He, he was. And as a matter of fact, I talked to him sometime, and he said if he would, if my father wouldn't leave him, if he w they would be together, they probably both wouldn't survive. Because you know, one was would would try to help the other, and two is harder than one. One could somehow. Uh, he was a young boy, so he he's, he mentioned to me last year that it was better for him. And um, where was I? I'd like I to go back a little before before you talk about the end of the war. I'd like to. Know more about your childhood before you left Warsaw. I'd like to know what schools you went to. I went to a private school, to a gymnasium. Called, the name was Collegium. And um, my parents said they have two jewelry stores, so they can afford to send me to a private school. I had um, many Jewish and non-Jewish non friends and, uh, until 1936. Then, then it started uh, the anti-Semitism, and uh, so I had more uh, connection with my Jewish friends. Do you remember your thoughts when anti-Semitic um, attacks occurred to you? What I remember it was in Warsaw was a, a street where there was uh, many uh, bookstores, and uh, at one time, and I don't know exactly when, they um, started uh, uh, picketing, so to speak, Jewish bookstores. I don't know exactly why it was that. 
in school, uh, actually, I did not, e even it was not a, a Jewish gymnasium, it was a Polish uh, gymnasium. There were about 25 percent Jews. I didn't have any uh, anti-Semitic uh, encounters there. Were you non-Jewish friends with non-Jewish friends at the time? You see, uh, 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 I, I left war, so the war started in, on September the, s the 1st. And I left November 15. I, uh, after the war started, I didn't have any connection with my parents. Where do we go from here? <laughs> um, were you a religious family? Religious, um, not. not. Uh, I know that my father uh, went to Shul or Sh Shabbos, um, but um, not specially. Usually, Jewish holidays, yes, but uh, otherwise, no. And did you have a large family? Yes, family? we had a very large family. My mother had um, 12 sisters and brothers. My father had only a sister and one brother. But I had many cousins. And, and um, I'm sorry to say that only uh, the, my two uncles who left for Israel to Palestine, uh, and their family survived. All others did not survive. Yeah, survived. No. Okay. Do you remember large family gatherings with your cousins and aunts and uncles? Uh, yes, I do remember uh, at my grandfather's house, which was on Muranowska, which was in a Jewish neighborhood. Uh, usually Yontef time. together. Otherwise, because the family was so big, we rather uh, visited each uncle or aunt separately. Mm -hmm. Are there any special occasions that stand out in your mind that day? No, not particularly. No. Any, any Jewish, uh, Jewish holidays, we would be together, mostly with my mother's family. My father's uh, parents, my, my grandma from my father's side, I don't remember at all. My grandfather passed away when I was two years old. From my mother's side, the grandfather was uh, still alive when the war started. As a matter of fact, our house was bombed right away in the beginning of the war on September 3rd, and we uh, lost everything, and we moved to my grandfather. Stay there for a few uh, weeks. Can you tell us about your brother Adam? We know a little bit about him. But my brother. Kind of story about him. My brother Adam. We. Um, he was uh, of course uh, six. Six years. He was six years younger than I was. So um, I didn't spend too much time with him. I was always busy with my friends. And uh, as a matter of fact, I don't, from the childhood, I don't remember too much uh, about uh, our relationship. And the one, uh, one thing I remember, one day he has a little uh, car toy with a, toy with a glass, it uh, was a convertible, with a piece of glass as a, as a front window. I don't know what happened, but he sat on it. And of course, he uh, cut himself. And this one accident I remember vividly. <laughs> he uh, survived. He uh, lives in Israel. And, uh, and he has uh, two children and three grandchildren. And we see each other at least uh, once a year, I would say. We go to Israel. Or sometimes they come. Anything else? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. We started to talk about your life after you were liberated. Oh, that was good. Okay. So tell us now, you, what day were you liberated? Do you remember exactly? 
I, rem I don't know exactly. I remember on May the 1st, we stopped, because May uh, 1st is a holiday in Russia, we stopped in a station at uh, Kiev. We stayed there for 24 hours because of the holiday. From there, as I mentioned before, we went to uh, Poznan. I went to, from there to Warsaw. I spent two or three days there. I didn't find anything. I looked for our, of course, our house was burnt, as I said. But I went to see our, uh, the stores we used to have. One survived, was, was there, but of course nothing. The other one was also burned down. From there, I went to Waldenburg in Silesia. I, I went on a train. I never, rem never forget this trip because I had to go on, on the top of the train because it was full of passengers. Everybody was going, and there were not too many trains. So I had to uh, go on top of the train. And every time a, a bridge came, they were screaming, down, so we had to go down. As I spent in Waldenburg a few months. I uh, had the mail from Israel I, uh, that my father survived, and he is in Lübeck in Germany. And my brother also was there. And so I decided to, to go. How did you find out from him? Through, through Israel, through my uncles. They wrote to them. and. This, this way I found out. So uh, I left Waldenburg and uh, through Bricha. They took us to Czechoslovakia and uh, Austria and then to Munich, Germany, and uh, to Lübeck. There I met my father, who already had a, another jewelry store there. He started right away a normal life. That was 1946. And uh, one day I was in, in the store, and uh, two young ladies came in. And one of them was his my wife. <laughs> I what saw her. When you saw her? <laughs> I don't know what happened, but something clicked, and, and uh, that's it. And uh, now we are just celebrated our 45th wedding anniversary. Let's, Let's go back. 45 years in between. Okay. <laughs> we met, you met your wife. Met my wife. Uh, my father, in uh, 1948, he moved to Israel with, with, his, uh, with his wife, second wife. They married in 1947. They went to Israel. And in 1949, end of 49, we uh, decided to visit them with my fiancé. And when we were in Israel, my father said, OK, I don't know if you are going to come to Israel or go maybe to America, get married. In 1949, um, we, we went to uh, Tel Aviv. And of course, uh, at that time, uh, I had uh, still a big mishpocha there. A lot of uncles and aunts, which we met, uh, I didn't see since uh, since before the war, and uh, I didn't see my brother for quite a few years. He uh, he was in Lübeck together with my father, and uh, then he decided to go to Israel. However, uh, because he was a young man, they did not provide for him a certificate. So he decided to go uh, with the Briha uh, illegal. And he went uh, and he uh, came to Israel successfully. And uh, first he was working um, in a kibbutz, not Kalhaus, but <laughs> kibbutz, uh, uh, I believe a year or two. And then he started to work for the telephone company where he was working since then till he retired last year. Last year at 95? No, 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 my brother. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we, sp we were in uh, Israel at that time about with, with uh, Angelina, uh, 
for about uh, two months. Then we got married and uh, we stayed uh, there another month and we went back to Lübeck, where we uh, applied for our papers to America. And we came here in um, June of 51. Uh, your first son, George, was born. He, he was four. born in Germany, and he was uh, six weeks old when we came here. We came by plane because, because of him. Uh, we arrived in uh, New York, and uh, we had some friends there. Actually, we, our paper said um, to go to Stockton, California. I. Um, being uh, in Lübeck, I started to learn watchmaking, as my father was watchmaker. So uh, they had a job for me in Stockton. However, our friends said, no, we are going to go so far to California. They have no friends. Stay here. So I stayed in New York. And I worked as a watchmaker in New York. And I uh, had another son. Michael, and um, we were quite successful in uh, working. Uh, I was working, my wife was working. And, uh, we sent our sons to college, uh, chiropractic school, and there we are. Let's go back a few years. I, I think it would be interesting to hear about your years in Russia. From your first, from your first stop until you left, I know you were at a few different camps working. Would you talk more oh, about the, that? Uh, in the um, Arhangelsk or in uh, Ostyuk, uh, we had to work hard. The summers were very hot, and the winter was very cold. The temperature uh, was uh, in the winter time uh, fifty minus and below. And there was no picnic, there was no day off, e even if the temperature were, would be minus 50, they still let us go. And um, they did not feed us very well. As I mentioned before, 800 grams of bread per day, and that was a small piece because the bread was very heavy, more water than anything else. And the only thing it was that uh, we didn't fear them for our lives. You didn't fear for your lives? No. Why? Because uh, we work, they wanted us to work, and not like in, in Germany they took people to concentration camps. This was more working camp, no, no that's right. I mean. What did you, did you ever think, is there a God? Why is this happening to us? We didn't have time for that. Because we worked for 12, 12 uh, hours a day. And when we went uh, to the barracks, we were looking for something to eat. And we're tired and happy to go to, uh, to sleep. When you, when you went into the barracks, you were tired, but did you talk among, talk among yourselves about your lives before you ended up in this camp, about your families? Did you all talk about your families? I don't think that we, uh, we were so uh, busy with the daily life that uh, anything what was Previously, we did not uh, think about it. Even so, I, of course, I uh, got some letters from my parents, from my father. And, uh, but uh, there were only f few and far between. If I get out of here or when I get out of here, 
I'm gonna tell the world. I might have, but I, I don't remember. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of things I do not remember. I don't know why it's like a blackout. I know that uh, we had very hard times there. And, uh, but uh, many things I forgot. Pro probably that, that why, that why, that was, it was not, not a picnic. Even so, uh, uh, in, in the Kolhos, when we worked, it was much easier than, uh, than in, uh, in, the, in the first camp in, in Arhangelsk, because uh, the, the weather was different. It was not so, the, the, the winters were terrible. How long were you in the first camp for? In the first camp we were till, uh, till uh, 1941. And in 1941 you went to Kolhos? Kolhos, yes. Kolhos. Actually first we were in a little town when I were uh, in Lenga when we uh, were working on a oil expedition, but there were we only a few months. There also we had problems with food and uh, supplies, not only, uh, not only because we were, because at that time we were free already, not only uh, everybody had the problem. Uh, today you, you might have gotten uh, uh, half a pound of sugar, and that was good maybe for six months, because the deliveries did come, or somebody um, sold it on a block m black market. Any other questions? <laughs> In a, in a kolhos, uh, we, we worked in the fields, and uh, also between 10 and 12 hours a day. We had to uh, provide for ourselves, to cook for ourselves. But what did we cook? Uh, some fish soup, as I mentioned before, and, and uh, we baked our own bread. It was um, actually um, like the pita. We baked it on a small, we had a small ovens. We had to prepare ourselves and bake ourselves. But at least we had it. We, uh, bread uh, was no problem. About how Other many people in Kolhos? How big was this place? Uh, uh, Kolhos is, was um, uh, uh, Kazakh. Kazakhs kolhos. They used to have uh, uh, Russian kolhos and Kazakhs. They put us in a Kazakhs kolhos, and uh, there were about um, 50 of uh, Jewish uh, people. But the, the kolhos itself was uh, Kazakh, which uh, the, the people are um, Muslims. So they have also uh, some uh, Jewish customs, like uh, no eating pork or something like that. They were uh, uh, um, pretty good to us. There were no, no anti-Semitic uh, incidents. The only thing I remember, they used to say, first when we came, Jews Yevrei kusher chovyek. It means Jewish Jews eat peep. Jews eat people? They didn't know. They didn't know about Jews at all. They didn't know what it... Somebody told them the, the, the Jews eat people. But of course they saw that uh, when as normal and there. And did you, and did you Jews work together, or you, you mix? No, no, we mix everybody. Uh, 
We had our small uh, rooms with, with the Kazakhs and uh, everybody was working. Some were working in the field, some were working in the kitchen or whatever was needed. Now, um, um, what I don't know is why were the Cossacks, I mean, were they prisoners? No, 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 no. Oh, this was a... Okay, there no prisoners, okay. no, no. This, uh, they were on their own field, in their own kibbutz, uh, kolkhoz, mm -hmm. and uh, they just uh, divided. 50 people in one kolkhoz, 50 people or 100 people in another one. But most, mostly in Kazakhs. There were some Russian kolkhoz too, but uh, they did not uh, send us to those. Where did you go after kolkhoz? Where was your next stop? N next stop was uh, Liberation. Oh, so you were there for about four years then. Right, yeah, between between uh, um, between the um, camp and I was a couple of months in in Lenga when we uh, looked for oil, and the rest I was in a, a cohort till the liberation. Okay. What are some of your thoughts fifty years later? Well. The one thought I have is uh, America, America, the great, the great America. We always um, uh, thinking about America, uh, but if somebody, if somebody was in Russia, then he can appreciate even more what the United States mean. I wish. Every boy, every American, born American, would go for, even now, and not even to Russia, to any place in the world, and then come back, and uh, we w wouldn't have so much trouble with gangs and some other stupidities. Do you believe in God? Do I believe in God? I suppose so, yes. You know, I, um, I don't know if too many people, too many survivors do believe. I, I, I think I do. Is there anything you would like to add about your experiences that, that you haven't said yet? I, I don't only think I, I'm glad that I'm here in America and I will survive. And um, I have a nice family, and uh, I'm very happy. I hope it will last forever. And and is that your message for your for your children and your grandchildren and the rest of the world? Or, or my message, uh, my message is they they should uh, stop uh, bickering and fighting and um, think about. Uh, peace, especially in Israel. Do you have some pictures that you would like to share with oh, us? Oh, yes, I have. This, this picture was taken in uh, 1920s, I believe 1924-25. The bearded man is my uh, grandfather, my mother's ma uh, father, Abraham Reichert. And this are uh, one, two, three, four, five his uh, sons. On the left, far left side is my mother. On the right, uh, far side is my aunt. And where was it taken? Was it was taken in Warsaw. Warsaw. Um, it was uh, my one of uh, my uncles passed away, so they were at the cemetery. This is my uh, picture of my father, mother, and uh, brother. My father, Julian Bilauer, my mother, Malka Bilauer, and my brother, Adam Bilauer. This picture was taken in 1941 mm -hmm. in Warsaw, and I got it uh, sent to uh, Russia. 
I treasure this picture because it's the only picture uh, was taken uh, during the war. This cute boy is myself. I was uh, there um, about a year, a year and a half. And of course, you know my name is Richard Bilal. And where was it taken? Uh, this was taken in a photographer's uh, place. In I don't Warsaw? Know. In Warsaw, yes. This picture was taken in uh, Schwieder in, in, um, on vacation time. On the left is my mother, Mark Kabilawa, and on the right is my uncle, um, Moshe Reichert, who is the uh, school cat, is Richard Bilal, it's myself, and the little boy is my brother. We spent there our uh, summertime. And, and, and nine, I don't remember the year, it must be 1932 or three. In Warsaw. No, in, in, this the summer? in the summer home. Okay. This is our wedding picture, and it's uh, my wife Angelina Bilawa and myself, Richard Bilawa. This was in 1950 in Israel, in Tel Aviv, Israel. This picture was taken in uh, Germany, in Lübeck, Germany, in 1946. This is uh, my father, Julian Bilawa, and myself, Richard Bilawa. Yes. This picture was taken uh, two years ago at 19, uh, what is it, 1953? 1993. 1993, yes. On a cruise to Alaska. This is my uh, beloved wife. Angelina and myself, Richard Bilal. This little guy is my uh, youngest grandson, Jeremy Bilawa. He is son of uh, Michael Bilawa. This is uh, Jesse Bilawa and Josh Bilawa, both sons of my son, George Bilawa. On the left, you see my uh, little son, Michael, and this is George Bilal, and next to him am I, Richard Bilal. It was taken in what year? was taken just uh, last uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving 1994. This is my son, Michael Bilal with his wife, Donna Bilawa, and their little son, Jeremy. This picture was taken a couple of years ago. I, I suppose 1993. This picture was taken in 1994 uh, in Pacific Palisades. This is my son, George Bilawa, with his wife, Cecil Bilawa, and two sons, Josh, and Jesse Bilal. Okay. I don't remember her name. I mean the first name. Who I, is it? My grand, my mother's. Uh, it's your grandmother. Yeah, my mother. Grandmother Reichert. That's all. Your grandmother Reichert. Mm. I would say no. What do you mean? 1800, she was born. The picture wasn't taken. 